there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I was completely inspired by actually looking at this paper pad. Now this is the Gather at Home Cartabella 6x6 paper pad and this has some gorgeous designs in it. I sometimes get a paper pad, I don't work with them too often, but sometimes I get one and it does tend to spark ideas and does make life easier every now and then. So I have a friend of mine and she is finally able to make it home due to uh, just everything that's happening in the world at the minute. She is able to make it home and I was making a card to welcome her home and I just wanted a kind of nice homely feel like a new home card or someone who has a collection of these and I was looking at these jugs here and I thought yeah I feel like I can make something like that. <laughs> I will give it a go and we'll see how this turns out. So there are all these gorgeous jugs. Now, I'm probably not sure if these are jugs or pitchers or whatever you want to call them. Um, but anyway, there are lots of different types here. And I wasn't necessarily just inspired by one of them. I just thought this would be a really fun shape, a really nice thing to put on the front of the card. And so I thought I would recreate my own using some of the patterns and the papers that are in this um, paper pad as well. So sometimes, even though we don't have stamps and dies and things like that to create this, with relatively simple shapes and a little bit of inspiration, we are able able to create something and I love how this card turned out it kind of even surprised me so I'm taking out this piece of it's kind of like a deep pinky orangey and it happens to be the other side of the jugs pattern piece so I was able to kind of look at this and just to help me mentally I cut it down to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches just to start off with so I could get the idea that it would fit onto my card base then I am working on the reverse side and just because the paper was black I'm working with a white pen however if your paper that you're using has a plain side then use anything this just helps me sketch it out and kind of see where I want to go with my design. Now I would never say that this kind of thing is my forte but even I was surprised with how good I felt this turned out. I really like this card in the end and all the little details that we do to it tend to make it look a little bit better. So I'm using my little cutter bee scissors just to cut out the rough shape as, this, as I said this is the reverse side so I'm going to turn it over and the other side is what we'll be working on. And then it looks a little bit rough at this point so you can kind of see where it needs evening up and those sorts of things so I can add in those little details now and just kind of snip them out the top was a little bit not even so I'm just going to cut nice and straight ish across the top and then I'm starting to get there I do need a handle and again I just looked at a couple in the pictures and I'm going for one that just looks a little bit like this I'm making it separate um just because it was easier to do it that way but you could definitely do it all in one and not have to attach it later on um, so I just again drew it out roughly and then I'm cutting it out with my little scissors and then this means I can kind of shift it around as I want to glue it on later as well so you can see how it's going to fit roughly to the side there now this is where it comes to kind of the decorating part and I'm sure that you will have some things that you're able to do here now I chose to use some multi matte medium this is what is in my little glue bottles that I use. This is the Ranger one. And this is actually a really, really strong glue. But this is great for mixed media. It is great for gluing items onto your card bases. It's great for gluing paper. But I'm going to use it here to create a non-porous surface that I can use my big brush markers over. Now, if you don't want to go down this route or you don't have the big brush markers, then I would not do the matte medium. And I would just use inks to... Uh, blend a little bit onto your um, jug or your pitcher and that way you are going to get pretty much the same look just using different mediums. Now just for today I decided to use my big brush markers but as I said if I didn't have them using ink and doing some ink blending you would be able to get very similar results I'm sure. So once I have glued my handle on this is once all of the uh, matte medium was dry from the first layer and now I'm able to add in these big brush markers. Now these are not necessarily readily available anymore. I do think that you can get these in these smaller brush markers and they have the same ink inside. This is an India ink and it is permanent. However, if you put it onto a non-porous surface, it does give you a minute to kind of move it around with your fingers and I absolutely love this. So I'm doing a little test of the colors down there in the corner. 
And this is where I kind of go for gold. So you kind of put it on and it's really dark and then you can move it around with your fingers to get a little bit of shading and it just really defines the image that you're working on. It does give uh, blending and it does give shadows and all those things. As I said, you can definitely achieve this just using ink blending and ink daubers or anything that uh, gives you that little bit of finer than just a big uh, domed foam blending tool or something like that. You want something a little bit finer, but uh, finger daubers I think would work perfectly for this. I had these out on my desk for a previous project, so that's probably why I went down this road. Um, but yeah, it just creates some really nice blending and a little bit of... Um, dimension to the jug to make it just appear a little bit rounder rather than being quite so flat. So I add it just here, there and everywhere where I think and then once I nearly think I'm done I add a little bit more in just to kind of get the top bit of the jug a little bit more round looking and when I stand back and look at it it's not too bad. It definitely has added something to it but from here I want to decorate the jug. So what I need to do is I need something that is going to stand out on my um that kind of quite dark background that I have. I also need to make sure that it's going to be permanent now that I've added the matte medium things like distress ink and things will not stay there um, because it's a non-porous surface. So I was looking through all of my stencils and just trying to find some that I could use some embossing paste with. Now this little decoration down the bottom would look really good even though it's a Merry Christmas stencil. Uh, some little fine dots. I thought about covering the jug in little fine dots. I saw a little bit of uh, leaves and foliage. I just went through my whole stencil stash and sort of found anything that I thought could make work for this. This one is kind of feathers. Uh, again, I'm not sure where all of these came from. These are all different stencils uh, that I just have collected. And anything that you have in your stash is actually going to work here. Surprisingly, when I went through my stash, I found that actually lots of these could work really well. So here I am in my head just trying to plan out exactly what I want to do and honestly I didn't even know what I wanted to do and it was um, a real project where I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I definitely did not have a plan of how I wanted this one to look once it was finished. So I am just kind of doing my best here. There is some uh, texture paste or embossing paste or all of those things which are very, very similar. This one is just a plain white one and this is opaque. I don't want this to dry translucent, although you could do that too. You could also add another color to this uh, using some reinkers or ink that you could color the paste with. But I thought just nice, simple, bright white would work well. I decided it was smarter to cover up those extra feathers in the top there because knowing me, I would definitely smudge it on there. So I am just going to add quite a thin layer. I don't want this to be super thick. I don't need it to take a long time to dry. I don't need it to be super dimensional. I just want the pattern on there. And this looks kind of good. I like that as a start. And I was like, where to from here? So once I had thought about it for a minute, I was wondering if I should cover the whole jug in these feathers or if I should use a different one. Uh, but I ended up using the same one and I'm going to just block off a couple of those other ones side by side. And then I do have to hold it up because my other one is wet here and then carefully I just put on a little bit more paste and add one coming in from this left hand side. And then from here I wasn't sure if I wanted to uh, kind of add another one down the bottom but once I got to thinking about it I felt like this looked like a nice kind of wraparound design around the middle of it and then I was think looking at my other stencils thinking I thought those faded dots would look really nice so very very simple I'm just going to cover up that little bottom of the handle of the jug there because I didn't want any of the design to be on the handle and then quickly swipe across some of that texture paste as well this one's really easy because it's just very very simple dots and this is quite a fine stencil once it gets up to the top of those smaller dots. And when I take it off, I was like, yep, that's what I wanted. That was perfect. Just the perfect little finishing amount down the bottom there. And then I just take off any of the excess and make sure to let that dry. I'm able to speed that process up a little bit using a heat gun. Don't get too close or you might make it bubble, but I can definitely speed it up so it's dry enough to work with. Um, maybe not completely, completely dry, but dry enough to work with and I won't smudge it. 
So then I just go through my paper pad and I'm going to find a couple of backgrounds and things that I can kind of create a scene with. A very, very simple scene. I have cut out a piece um, of this kind of pattern paper. This reminds me of like wallpaper. Uh, so I am putting this down. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And I decided to make this uh, card front piece measure the entire card front. Um, just because I didn't really like it when I kind of held it back and looked like it would add a frame. It just didn't look quite right. So then I have this darker green piece which I'm going to pop down the bottom. This could be a table, it could be a rug, a mat, something that it's sitting on. It just kind of grounds the image. Then I take uh, some of those pens a little bit and just smudge a little bit of ink underneath, just a little bit like a darker shadow. I actually am just holding my jug in place at the moment. I haven't adhered it down. I was just kind of seeing where I would put a little shadow down the bottom and this kind of ends up as it dries it disappears a little bit which is perfect and you could skip the step most certainly and as I said if you have ink you could just add a little bit uh, down using a finger dauber down the bottom and that would work perfect too. But from here I was going to put the jug down nice and flat but I did decide to pop this up. So I'm going to use some of these uh, really skinny thin foam strips. These are from scrapbook.com and I have been really enjoying these because I can maneuver these around once you take off the front and back of the release paper. I can move these around all sorts of corners and it just makes the edge look really nice and smooth if I can't see all little foam squares or things like that um, from the side view of the card. So I like to cover up the entire outside um, using a complete piece of foam if I can. Sometimes I'm not able to, but if I can, I quite like that clean look. Then for the inside here, I decided when I saw this little, um, is this a sentiment? This little sign sentiment, I'm not sure what it is, um, that could be used for a card front. I decided to take some of it and actually make this my sentiment which would go inside of the card and it says it's so good to be home with you and that gorgeous little card down the bottom but all I really wanted from this one is the it's so good to be home because that is exactly how she felt it had been a long time and a lot of organizing and a lot of stress for her to get home so I decided that this was perfect and all I'm going to do is take some of that uh, same green that I adhered down onto the front of the card and I'm just going to mat this up. It's not very often that I take a pre-made sentiment and pop it in the card, but this one just felt like it was made to be. So I use a little border and then I'm going to pop this right in the center and this is going to be my sentiment, which is just kind of in the middle of the card. And then that is today's card done and dusted. Really simple, but inspired from this pattern paper. So I hope that you can recreate something similar or you were inspired to give this card a go. If you were, our Facebook page is a great place to show and share pictures with me so I'm able to see what you've created. It's called Come Crafting with Natasha. There will be links to that page as well as all of the uh, products that I've used in today's video down in the description box below here and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!